how do I repurpose old posts? Because you'll start to discover that as you create consistently, let's just use the example of writing right now. As you write consistently, you're going to start building up this, you know, body of work that maybe at first you have 10 posts and then you'll have 30 posts and then you'll have 100 posts and then you have 300 posts. Um, I think at this point I have, um, you know, I know I've written over a thousand posts, but I have cataloged at least 300 of them. And so when you have written so much, uh, yes, it's always a good practice to keep creating something new on a regular basis, but it doesn't have to be as often once you have all this, you know, collection. So because once you have this collection, you should start thinking about taking some older writing, bringing it back, editing it with your current perspective. You might decide, sometimes there's a light edit. Some, a lot of times for me, it's a light edit where I'm just looking through and go, oh, okay, that was my writing back then. Let me go ahead and, you know, take out some sentences and let me add some, some more ways that I would speak now or write now. And, and sometimes I see, I, I do major edits where I'm, you know, chopping up I'm taking out a whole section that I don't feel is, is applicable anymore. I'll add, my, I'll add in my current insights or a new story or something like that. So um, the question for, you know, that someone asked me is, well, how do I organize that process? And so um, step number one is that you have to first see what your old posts are. Now, if you, if you simply blog, uh, you know, on, on your website, if that's where it is, it doesn't matter. Some, some of you do it on websites, some of you do it on medium.com, some of you do it on LinkedIn or even on Facebook. But essentially, all of those places, website, LinkedIn, you, you can basically scroll back to earlier posts and then pick one and say, okay, that one is uh, still quite good. And maybe it's somewhat relevant right now to what I want to talk about. And I'm going to repurpose it. The way I prefer to do it is put it, not surprisingly, for those of you who know my work, in a spreadsheet. So I have uh, in my content flow course, uh, I have a, this content template is in several of my courses. I have it in my content flow course. I have it in my blog to book course. I have, in my, I have, I have a, a video content template in my video course, but it doesn't matter. The key, I, I, I don't want to you know make this too long right now, but I wanted to tell you the key is once you know how to track all of your content, you can then decide some kind of rhythm of bringing back the old post. So my rhythm is basically at, I wait at least six months. I try to, I try to bring back, now that I have so many posts, I try to bring back a post from two plus years ago. So basically in my spreadsheet, I can easily sort by oldest first, right? I, in my spreadsheet, I have Obviously, you know, the usuals like the title of the post, the link to where it is. I, I happen to track, you know, content metrics from one particular platform. I use Medium to track my content metrics. Doesn't matter. I just, but what I mean is I have another column, very important column called most recently posted, right? Most recently posted. That's a column. I have a date in that column. So I sort by that date, oldest first to say, okay, my most recently posted you know, this one, this row, my most recently posted uh, date was, you know, three years ago. Wow. Okay. And I just basically look at, I sort by the oldest first and I start looking down to see if there's one that kind of might, has an intuitive hit to say, oh, that one, I feel like I could talk about, I could, I have something fresh to say, or I want to repeat this because it's, it's still very important. And um, maybe I recently got a question about it or something. So I sort by oldest first, I look down, I find one that is relevant or, or energizing for me right now. And then I go ahead and copy, you know, I copy that into a document and I start editing it, you know, with my new insights, et cetera. So I hope this is helpful. And then that way, of course, once I post it again, I update the, I update the date for most recently posted is now today, you see. So in the future, next time, when I, when I, when I sort the spreadsheet again, that old post is now at the bottom because I've, I've updated the date. You see what I mean? So uh, now the question is, you might say, well, well, how, how often do you repurpose an old one versus write a new one? Honestly, the rhythm is totally up to you. Um, for me, I'll just say for me, these days, 
like I said, I have so much content that I tend to, uh, I have a basically a, every single week, I'm either repurposing an old post or I am writing a new one. So in terms of blogging, I have, I have uh, it's a once a week rhythm and it's, you know, once one week is old, next week is new. One, the next week is old, next week is new. It doesn't always work out that way, but it's pretty much like that. Now, you might also be wondering, um, no, I, I think I'm going to do this in a, in a separate segment about repurposing a blog post into the different formats of stuff. Maybe that was the original asker's question. So I'm going to do that in, this, in a different segment. Yeah, and Marilyn here, live with me, has a couple of good observations. One is that Medium has made it harder to find older posts, um, especially if we don't know the titles of them. Now, I, I want to show you because... Uh, I don't know if you're doing it this way or not, but on Medium, when I go to my, my stats, richesmedium.com slash me slash stats, I can go down here and I can basically click on, uh, click on the date. It's by default, it, there's, it's, it's sorted by the latest first. So I click on the date. Um, okay, I click on the date and it's taking a long time to load because I have a bunch of posts. And Marilyn, since you're here, you, you've you written so much that it's going to take even longer for you to sort. So I agree. Okay, there you go. It took only half a minute or something like that. And this is my oldest post. I don't know when it is. You know, That's the problem. They don't tell you what the date is. You have to click on details, right? So that's not, that's not very helpful. I mean, yes, it's helpful to know that that's the oldest one, and your, your follow-up question is, well, do you, once you redo the old post, do you delete the old one or do you just edit the old one? Because if I, if I only edited this in Medium or in my blog and I didn't update the date of the post, this will still show up as whenever, I'm so curious when, when this was, this is my first Medium post was in 2013, <laughs> 2013. So if I simply edited this, the date would still say 2013. Right. Um, and so in medium, uh, you know, it's like I don't want to lose kind of this badge of honor of having written something in 2013. So I don't think I would delete old ones. But I, what I what I simply do is I, I copy it and I, and I create a new one. And I'm actually quite surprised that medium doesn't have a, a sensor for um, duplicate content. Because a lot of my repurposed pieces are not that different from my older ones that are also on Medium. And they have no idea that it's quite similar. So anyway, I just created a new one. And it's a, therefore, it's a new date because I, it's like writing a new article. So, um, but of course, with a spreadsheet, it's much easier to create your own columns and sort, sort it that way. So that's why I prefer using a spreadsheet because I, I have much more control over uh, understanding how old or new something is. And I want to say that if it's on my own website, I'd certainly update the date of that old post uh, on my website. And what I will say on my website on the post is I'll say originally written 2013, updated 2022 or something like that. So hope that helps.